In at number 10, Jesse Smollett. Jesse Smollett was best known for his role on Empire at the time of his scandal, although he was not a household name. But his fame exploded to new heights when he alleged that two white men who were wearing mega hats attacked him, shouting racist and homophobic slurs. The whole world supported him, and he became somewhat of a figurehead against racial hate. Until it was revealed that it was all a lie, and he actually paid two men to attack him. After it was revealed that he faked everything, the city of Chicago sued him for filing a fake police report, as well as the cost of investigating the attack for over $130,000. On February 11th of 2020, Smollett was indicted again by a Cook County grand jury on six counts pertaining to making four false police reports, and he was of course blacklisted from the industry. He was just found guilty of his crimes and will be serving time behind bars, and he will obviously never work in Hollywood again. In at number 9, Josh Duggar. Josh Duggar has finally been found guilty for his crimes and is now facing up to 40 years in prison for his charges. The former reality TV star, known as a sibling on the show 19 Kids and Counting, was sentenced and he will be charged in Arkansas. I can't exactly tell you what his charges are or the video could get flagged, but he was charged with receiving and possessing illegal content of after the guilty verdict, Duggar's lawyers made a statement saying, quote, We appreciate the jury's lengthy deliberations, we respect the jury's verdict, and we intend to appeal. He has since been taken into custody, but his sentence has not been determined. Since the guilty verdict, Josh's sister, Jana Duggar, has also been arrested on similar charges. Since the family is now disgraced, nobody will want to hire them again. In at number 8, Travis Scott. Travis Scott has been blacklisted from the music industry following the tragic Astroworld festival that took place in Houston. As of now, 10 people have passed away following the festival, while hundreds are injured. After the festival, fans realized this problematic behavior was not a one-off, and Travis had encouraged rowdy and dangerous behavior in the past. Scott and the concert organizers are now getting sued in a mountain of lawsuits that equal to potentially billions of dollars in payouts. Since it's unclear who's legally at fault for the tragedy, no concert venue or insurance agency will ever want to work with Travis again, as the liability is just not worth it. Many have speculated that Travis could even go bankrupt because of the money he's going to be paying out. Travis also did an interview with Charlemagne the God, where he took zero accountability for what happened. All this just proves that Travis will not have a career when this is over. In at number 7, Joe Gorga. Joe Gorga is currently performing a comedy set around the country, but at a show earlier this month, his performance was so bad that his wife Melissa had to pull him off the stage. Melissa and Joe are best known from their time on Real Housewives of New Jersey. While he was performing a stand-up set at the Governor's Comedy Club in Long Island, his performance got messy real quick. After Melissa yanked him off the stage, Joe submitted a statement through his manager, saying in part, quote, this was not my typical show. As I share my many life lessons in my stand-up routine, now I can add this one. Don't mix alcohol with Sudafed. He says he was not feeling well and decided to take something so that he would still be able to perform for his fans. But after he had a few drinks, his body did not react as well to the mix as he had hoped, and he started acting a little loopy. Joe said in the statement that he doesn't often take cold medicine and that his wife had not seen him like that, which is why she approached the stage to get him off. After this, who knows if he will be hired again by the venue. And at number 6, Drake. Drake and Kanye made huge waves in the rap community when they squashed their beef and came together to perform at the free Larry Hoover Benefit concert. Fans online said it was the concert of the year and were raving about Kanye's set. Some even said that it was his best performance ever. But sadly, Drake did not get that kind of response, and fans were disappointed and even embarrassed by Drake's performance. The big issue was that Kanye made a point to play a lot of his classic hit songs, while Drake practically only played music from his most recent release, Certified Lover Boy. One fan even joked that based on his set, Drake does not want Larry Hoover to be free. Drake has not responded to all the criticism, but I'm sure it's taken a hit to his ego. At number 5, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson is someone who is notoriously hated in Hollywood for quite a number of reasons. He's no longer considered for any Hollywood roles and hasn't been for a while, and he only seems to make an entrance into the industry when directing his own films since other studios don't want to work with him. He's been the subject of a number of controversies from that of the Passion of the Christ for being anti-Semitic to career damaging freakouts, driving under the influence, and a number of people coming forward to discuss Mel's racist and anti-Semitic views. Though he continues to be cancelled in Hollywood, he attempts to make a return every so often, but again, only through his own work. He's been facing controversy for decades and no one has really forgiven him, so he remains banned from Hollywood and essentially banned from all other media networks. As the new year approaches, I'm sure we can all agree that Mel won't be booking anything in 2022. At number 4, James Franco. James Franco has slowly 
slowly been losing respect in Hollywood to the point where he's losing work and connections in the industry. Things started to go downhill for the actor back in 2014 when he got into a scandal after he tried sliding into a fan's DMs only to find out that she was actually 17 years old. James met a girl visiting New York City at an autograph sighting outside of his Broadway show and the two took pictures together and she tagged him which obviously led to him finding her Instagram and DMing her. The two talked for a bit and after their conversation continued, James asked for her number, her age, her relationship status and whether or not he should have booked a hotel room for the both of them. Luckily nothing ever ended up happening between them but the fan ended up exposing their conversation online and James faced mild backlash. After that people got a very different impression of the actor and a lot of people started refusing to work with him as well. Because of his public image he might not be seen in many productions in the new year. At number 3, Katherine Heigl. A lot of people don't like working with Katherine Heigl because of how rude she is. She's been known to be mean to people on set, have high demands and just have a really bad attitude. She's known to be quite critical of the roles and material she's given and she even brought this up when she withdrew from the Emmy nominations because she said that the material she was given for Grey's Anatomy didn't warrant an Emmy. That's certainly disrespectful to the writers because for someone to say something like that implies that the writing wasn't good enough to please people whereas the people at the Emmys thought it was worth the award. Catherine is also known to make ridiculously high salary demands and apparently she's been doing this since before she became a big name in the industry. She's reportedly hired and fired a lot of publicists and assistants over the years so she really sounds like quite the diva. Because of all this, directors and Hollywood execs don't want to work with her anymore because she's a nightmare to work with. People say that she's been blacklisted from Hollywood so the chances of her booking anything substantial in 2022 are pretty slim. At number 2, Taylor Lautner. Taylor Lautner has been having a rough time in Hollywood lately. He's pretty much disappeared from the media and many think that the actor has been blacklisted from Hollywood because no one wants to hire him. Since finishing up his time in the Twilight Saga, Taylor hasn't really seen much success. After the franchise ended, Taylor went looking for work and at first people were ready to offer him some good Hollywood parts. He was still a big name in the industry after he got so much fame from playing his character Jacob Black in the Twilight movies but soon Hollywood executives realized that he's just not the powerhouse that they were expecting. The first few movies that he starred in tanked at the box office and between this and his high asking salary, no one was keen on taking a chance on the actor. In the years since, he's appeared on some TV shows like Scream Queens but other than that we haven't really heard much from him. He recently got engaged so maybe he's just focusing on living a simple life for now so maybe we won't see him come back to Hollywood in 2022. And finally at number 1, Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry made headlines this year after their interview with Oprah back in January. Since then they've been in and out of the news and a lot of people have wondered if Meghan will make her return to acting after leaving the royal family. She's already narrated a documentary about elephants that's on Disney Plus but can we expect more from Meg? Well the answer is maybe. Things might still be a little touchy with the actress and Hollywood because of all the drama surrounding her and the royal family so we might not see much from her in Hollywood in 2022 but maybe sometime soon we will watch Meghan return to the spotlight once again. Before we wrap things up for today I want you guys to leave a comment down below telling me one celebrity you wish would never get cancelled and one celebrity that you wish would get cancelled. Number 10 Taylor Swift Taylor's tyranny of torment must end now. Taylor Swift has made a name for herself as a person who thrives on the ending of a relationship. Since the late 2000s Taylor has been making millions in the music industry. Her songs like Love Story and 22 are anthems to many. The catchy tunes tend to come from a place of so-called heartache, however. Taylor has thanked her exes on several occasions for inspiring the songs that made her who she is today. People like Tom Hiddleston, Harry Styles, Jake Gyllenhaal all have had a part to play in the inception of some bops. The argument can and should be made that Taylor just needs to chill already. She's made several songs that were good without the need to berate an ex, and some of those songs are pretty revealing. While she may have collaborated with some artists in the past, no one is now jumping at the chance to work with her and possibly have a song written about how bad of a job they did. Daddy didn't do dishes. He went against all my wishes. See what I mean? It's catchy. Number 9, Russell Crowe. The Gladiator star and newest addition to the world of mythology in the MCU playing Zeus, Russell has had a steady career filled with blockbuster paychecks and fans galore. But according to several sources, the Pope's exorcist has quite the temper. In 2005, he made headlines for throwing a cell phone at a Mercer Hotel employee in New York City. Apparently, he found out that the phone was broken and he threw it without looking. It exploded on impact. That incident ended up being taken a bit too far, but that was not the only example of his escapades. In 2016, he returned to the media circuit, this time facing charges of alleged violence towards rapper Azalea Banks. That dissolved into a he said, she said situation that was settled outside of court. Crow has also made a mess on set in his early days, as a producer on the film Gladiator claims that Crow became furious and violent when he discovered how much the producer's assistant 
stint was being paid. The situation forced the producer, Bronco Lustick, to quit the production. While many fans love Crow in Gladiator, the people on set are probably a different story entirely. His career is slowly on the decline, as showcased by his recent passion project, The Pope's Exorcist, which was a low budget, dreadful movie that almost everyone involved regrets ever participating in. Number 8, Tom Cruise. While Tom may be an action movie star and was once a young Hollywood heartthrob, he's had a massive temper since day one. According to both former assistants as well as several co-stars from his past, Cruz is a regular toddler on set and is known to throw tantrums, being set off by the smallest thing. His former manager Eileen Berlin presented Tom with a gift on his 19th birthday. She gave him an album of teen magazine articles written about him and apparently that set him off. He told his manager that he considered himself an adult and not a teen idol and I just threw it right back in her face. Another example of Tom's aggression was on display during the filming on his recent Top Gun sequel, Maverick. During this time, Tom and the rest of the film crew were tasked to shoot on an actual aircraft carrier that was still in use by the US military. One of the crew posted on Twitter calling out the audacity of Tom's behavior, saying that Tom Cruise was really on their ship telling people not to talk or even look at them. After a few choice words from the crewmate online, it was made very clear that Tom was not welcome aboard their vessel. These are just a couple of examples though. Tom has blown up on film crews several times in the past, to the point where his Mission Impossible 2 co-star was constantly scared of Tom on set, and what he may freak out about next. Needless to say, nobody's lining up to hire Tom in their next pick, other than whoever gets stuck making the next Mission Impossible movie. Number 7, Rihanna. Riri is a rude lady, according to some of her fans at least. A fan shared the story of a co-worker who experienced firsthand just how cold Rihanna can be. They told insiders that they had won free tickets and backstage passes from a radio concert, and when it came time for the co-worker and her kids to meet Rihanna, she was sitting at her makeup booth and refused to face them. When the young fans asked if they could get her autograph, she instructed a nearby backup dancer to forge the signature before shooing them away like a movie villain. Oh, you want my love? Shoo shoo. In 2016, she further added fuel to the fire when she shared a photo of a young fan wearing a dress inspired by Rihanna's Wile E. Coyote themed costume that she had worn at an awards show a few years prior. She wrote, Dark Thought Rises with the hashtag prom bat. She shared the post with millions of people, alienating countless fans and ruining one fan's prom memories for the rest of their lives. Rihanna could have been the next big pop slash TV star, but her attitude just makes people look at her and go shoot. Number 6, Morgan Freeman. The voice of God himself, Morgan Freeman, has been a soothing soul for many, many years. To this day, families can still hear Morgan narrate the world around them in an immersive 360 IMAX screen experience at the Science Center in Toronto. He may be a comfort to some, but according to a few women, Morgan is their nightmare. Morgan has been accused of inappropriate behavior on multiple occasions between 1991 and 2015. According to one production assistant from the film Going in Style, which is a bank heist movie starring Morgan, Michael Caine, and Alan Arkin, Freeman subjected her to unwanted touching and comments about her figure and clothing on a near daily basis. Um, hey guys, uh, that's a creepy move, don't do that, and no one likes it. According to her, in one instance, Freeman attempted to lift her skirt and asked to see her under clothes. She was not the only one to speak out about this man though. A senior member of the production staff on the movie Now You See Me Too told CNN that Freeman harassed her and another female assistant on numerous occasions, making similar comments on both figure and clothes. I could go on with more and more examples, but just to save you some time and to boil it down, Morgan is creepy. In case you haven't noticed, he doesn't really act much anymore and is regularly refused work by any and all he asks. Gee, I wonder why. Halfway number 5, James Corden. James Corden is the beloved host of The Late Late Show and he's produced viral segments like Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts and Carpool Karaoke. But a lot of people don't know that he started out as an actor and he wants to do more of it in the future. But unfortunately the public does not want this for him and is doing everything possible to keep him away from their favorite musicals. He was a part of the live remake of Cats which was a disastrous failure. Then after it was announced that Ariana Grande was going to be acting in the big screen version of Wicked, the public was worried that James Corden might try to get involved. So someone started a petition called quote, Keep James Corden out of Wicked. The bio for the petition simply states, quote, James Corden in no way, shape, or form should be in or near the production of Wicked the movie. That's pretty much it. And almost immediately it got over 50,000 signatures. 
so hopefully they listen to the public and don't hire him. And at number 4, Chrissy Teigen. Chrissy Teigen has been hailed the queen of shade on Twitter, and she wears that badge with honor. But in 2020, it was exposed that she did more than just shade people in the past, and she was more of a bully. Tons of her old tweets were unearthed, where it was clear that she was attacking people for no reason at all. After the scandal, tons of her sponsors dropped her, and nobody wanted anything to do with her mean persona. At this point, people are worried that she doesn't deserve to have a platform if she's going to use it to attack other people. As of now, she is back tweeting following the massive scandal, but a lot of people don't want her back. And at number 3, Leah Michelle. Leah Michelle used to be the queen of musical theater, making a name for herself on the hit show Glee. But that all changed in 2020 when she got called out by plenty of her former cast and crewmates, saying she was a rude, entitled brat. The person who kicked this off was Samantha Ware. She started the entire downfall of Leah Michelle after she called out Michelle for the way she acted on the set of Glee. When Leah Michelle posted tweets in support of George Floyd after his death, Ware decided to call out Michelle on the hypocrisy. She commented, quote, Remember when you made my first television gig a living hell? Adding that Michelle was microaggressive towards her and even threatened her. After this, plenty more people of color that Leah had worked with came forward to expose her. As of now, she is laying low, but it doesn't seem that anyone wants to work with her. And at number 2, Marilyn Manson. Actress Evan Rachel Wood posted to her Instagram on February 1st, exposing that she had been a by Marilyn Manson. In the long statement, she said that he started engaging with her while she was only a teen, and she was quote, brainwashed and manipulated into submission. She then claimed that she did not want to live in fear, and she wants to expose him before he does more harm. Concluding quote, I stand with the many women who will no longer be silent. Wood, who is now 33, met Manson when she was only 18 and he was 36 back in 2007. They later got engaged in 2010 for 8 months, until the relationship ended. The statement on Instagram came as four other women recently recently come forward with allegations against Manson. Manson has denied these allegations, but he has still been blacklisted until these legal matters are sorted out. The only person who has collaborated with him since the allegations was Kanye West. And finally, number one, Matt Damon. Matt Damon got cancelled after he revealed in an interview that he recently stopped using the F-slur in conversation. He thought the media would praise him for the decision, but everyone was wondering what took him so long. During an interview, he shared a story about how his daughter urged him to stop using the F-slur as it is homophobic. Apparently, he made a joke and his daughter got up from the table because she was so angry over his choice of words. Then after a talk, he decided to stop using the word. But that revelation instantly backfired, with people calling out the star for ever saying it in the first place. Damon then tried to clear the air and clarify that he never actually said the F slur. Damon said that he understood why his revelation, quote, led many to assume the worst, but he added that he had never used the slur personally, that the conversation with his daughter was not a personal awakening. After this, tons of people decided to boycott his new movie, although most people have since forgotten about the scandal. Coming in at number 10 is James Franco. James has placed himself in a little bubble of public exile for using his powers for evil. The man behind some iconic characters like his portrayal as a real life filmmaker Tommy Wiseau, his role as Harry Osborn in the original Spider Man trilogy, and so many more, seemed to be on his way to a long, successful career, following multiple collaborations with longtime friend Seth Rogen, as well as his turn in more serious roles like True Story as a man on death row telling his tale of woe to a writer played by Jonah Hill. Apparently though, James has a problem keeping his hands to himself, especially when it comes to his acting students. In 2018, five female students at Studio 4 Acting School in North Hollywood told the Los Angeles Times that Franco had parlayed his position to exploit them physically. Two of these women sued and Franco was forced to settle outside of court and fork over the $2.23 million. At the time, he was writing, acting, and directing a show for HBO called The Deuce, which he was allowed to stay on and finish since it was being cancelled anyway. Not only did fans call for the cancellation of the series, but the public outcry forced Seth Rogen to drop his longtime pal, telling the Times of London that the scandal has changed their relationship and he refuses to collaborate with James anytime in the near future. And at number 9 we have Mike Myers. He's Canadian, he's a comedian, how could this guy be mean? Well it turns out it's his default setting. Mike may be well known in the world of Hollywood as a funny man, but to his fans he's known as a short tempered madman. One experience was shared with the media outlet Mean Stars, in which a fan told a story of running into Mike at a bar with the experience being disastrous as the love guru, like anything, could be so bad. The fan walked up and told Mike he was a big fan and offered to buy him a drink, to which Mike replied with, I can afford my own drinks, save the cash for my next movie. There are several instances both on and off sets showcasing his difficulty working with people. His Cat in the Hat co-star Amy Hill claimed that he 
had handlers dress his entire trailer and his work area was entirely covered with tenting because he didn't want anybody to physically see him. Maybe his reputation as a difficult Donnie has something to do with Hollywood seemingly blacklisting him from appearing as a lead in anything until his recent show aired on Netflix. A show where he's forced to play half the cast because he couldn't get more people to work with him. Maybe it has something to do with a love guru. Just maybe. And at number 8 we have Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle dominated the comedy scene in the 90s and early 2000s. His stand up was considered the most gut busting and entertaining around and his role in films like The Nutty Professor, Robin Hood, Men in Tights and the cult classic Half Baked. He took a bit of a break from starring in films to focus on his family and his true passion, stand up comedy. Despite being on stage for over 12 years, Dave never really learned to follow suit with the times and there were certain topics that became rude to joke about. Many jokes considered funny in the 80s and 90s have not aged well and unfortunately that seems to be all the material Dave has. In one of the most recent Netflix specials he made jokes aimed at the LGBTQ plus community. Jokes not worth quoting or repeating. They were rough enough to have Dave fans turn on him immediately. While he was cancelled by his fans, Netflix actually defended the comedian claiming he had artistic freedom even after a group of Netflix employees and transgender advocates staged a virtual walkout. The co-CEO Ted Sarandis who released the statement later admitted that he handled the situation poorly. Did you accidentally defend a man that was making fun of gay people? Gosh darn. Dave hasn't been cast in anything anytime in recent history as any and all who've collaborated with him in the past have distanced themselves as much as possible. And coming in at number 7 is Roseanne Barr. In the late 80s, Roseanne started a sitcom titled after herself and she starred alongside Hollywood heavyweight John Goodman in a series that followed the couple's everyday lives as a working class family. The show aired for 230 episodes, eventually being cancelled in the mid 90s. The show was eventually revived in 2018 as the same wholesome content for a new generation. Unfortunately for Roseanne, sitcom producers have Twitter. Her show was quickly cancelled only a few hours following Barr posting a tweet about Valerie Jarrett telling the world that she was the product of Planet of the Apes and a certain brotherhood had a baby. She later apologized for the tweets but the damage was done. ABC Entertainment President Channing Dungey said in a statement that Roseanne's Twitter statement is abhorrent. Abhorrent, repugnant and inconsistent with their values. Again, with the values. Barr actually defended her tweets saying they were not racist but in fact a joke. Yeah, those can be the same thing, Rosie. She's yet to be hired by any studio and has stayed silent ever since. And at number 6 is J.K. Rowling. As a Harry Potter geek, this one stings. J.K. Rowling is known for being the author of the much loved Harry Potter book series that was eventually adapted in 7 gloriously magical movies and Order of the Phoenix. In June 2020, J Rowling retweeted an op-ed piece that discussed people who menstruate apparently taking issue with the fact that the article didn't use the word women. She tweeted, people who menstruate? I'm sure there used to be a word for those people. Someone help me out. This tweet garnered massive amounts of backlash from fans. Rowling doubled down on her views in more detail and she tweeted, if gender isn't real, there's no same gender attraction. I know and love trans people but erasing the concept of gender removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. She went on to say that she respected trans people's right to live in any way that feels authentic to them but at the same time, her life had been shaped by being female. She claimed it wasn't wrong to speak the truth and to be proud but no. Everyone in the world called JK out for her comments and views with the live action Harry Potter stars even taking to, the, to Twitter to call out her behavior, standing with the trans community. She unfortunately still makes money off the Fantastic Beasts franchise but she's been refused work on set for the rest of her days, having to watch her property prosper without her. Number 5 Chris Evans Yes, Chris and Ryan have collaborated together in the past. In fact, re they recently starred as the leads in the Netflix action flick The Grey Man. But that's probably going to be the last time that ever happens. Evans probably best known for playing the human tor- I mean Captain America in the Marvel Cinematic Universe was actually involved in a little scuffle with Ryan on set of The Grey Man. The film, which is action heavy, like this, like action heavy, like this thing could be on an episode of my 600 pound life. It is so heavy. The film features many fighting sequences between the main characters and reportedly one take went horribly wrong. Chris accidentally punched Ryan in the face for real and since he was aiming to miss, Evans accidentally put his entire body weight into the blow. He knocked Ryan off of his feet and filming was halted immediately. Ryan took the hit like a champ, he got back on his feet and he continued to film the scene. Following the film's release, Chris has had nothing but nice things to say about Ryan but has joked about never working with the man that he punched in the face ever again. Who would have thought that Captain America gets socially anxious about stuff? Huh. Number 4 Jane Fonda 
So okay, the reason Jane is on this list actually doesn't have anything to do with something Ryan has done or said. It's more or less what she's done to him. Jane Fonda has been a prominent member of Hollywood's roster since 1965, starring in several much loved projects including her successful Netflix series Grace and Frankie. In 2014 a Vanity Fair article was released as Jane had some explaining to do. Photos began to surface of Jane and her assistant carrying a chair to her car. That chair had Ryan's face printed on the seat. You see where I'm going with this? For anyone who has actually seen Grace and Frankie, you may notice that chair from the first episode of the series. Jane had to make it clear that she did not intend to keep the chair for personal use. However, multiple copies were made. While she claims they sold out overnight, she did not clarify if she had a part in that or not. So I bet the $8 in my savings account she's got one hidden in her basement somewhere, next to a bottle of Chardonnay and a boombox loaded with George Michael. <laughs> Number 3 Jimmy Fallon For those who only know Jimmy as the charismatic late night talk show host that he is today, you're missing out on some good stuff. Jimmy first got his start in the acting world when he was added to the cast of the late night sketch series Saturday Night Live. He was only a featured cast for a short time before being moved to the weekend update portion of the show, which is still the funniest part of the night to this day, thanks to Colin Jost and Michael Che. While Jimmy has had Ryan on his show many times to discuss upcoming projects in the past, he's actually got a little bit of a secret hatred towards Ryan for stealing his thunder. In 2004, Jimmy tried to make a move to the silver screen, starring in the comedy Taxi alongside Queen. Latifah. The film received solid reviews and it helped solidify Latifah as a woman who could control the screen. And Jimmy, eh. A few years later, Ryan starred in an action thriller called Drive, following a stuntman on the run. You see, Jimmy has claimed that the plots of these two films are eerily similar and they have clearly copied his idea. Yes, they took Taxi, they wrote out a character, they changed the plot, the style, the genre, and the dialogue to create Drive. Yeah, in case you can't tell, that's not true! But it could be, maybe, who knows, could be true. Number 2, Simu Liu. The Kim's Convenience star and first ever live action Asian American superhero Shang-Chi, Simu is actually set to star alongside Ryan in the upcoming Barbie movie as a fellow Ken variant, Michael Sarah, and I'm sure a massive amount of other people that we don't know about yet. According to Simu, filming the project with Ryan was a blast, but there were some noticeable problems between the two. You see, Ryan and Simu reportedly had the strongest chemistry out of everyone on set. When they were together for a scene, you knew it was going to be gold and chock full of spicy tension. According to the crew, a bromance formed between these two, causing them to always be buddy buddy on set, which is considered to be a little unprofessional, just, just a smidge unprofessional. In between takes, they were dancing, laughing, and loudly conversing, which I'm sure made the lighting and the sound in the director's lives very easy. Simu was asked if he would ever do a one on one project with Ryan, to which he replied, hey, only if one of us is always off the camera. These two getting together for a flick sounds pretty good to be honest, but understandably that film schedule would be one nightmare after the other. And number one, Donald Glover. Troy and Abed are an entry. Donald Glover first made his mark on the small screen starring as the lovable Troy Barnes in the hit sitcom Community, alongside comedy greats like Chevy Chase and Yvette Nicole Brown. When the show was canned in 2015, many fans were wondering what was next for Donald, arguably one of the best parts of the show. Well not arguably, if you just want any proof watch any season without his character in it, it's bad. Donald actually focused his efforts on creating a new show for himself called Atlanta. The show is a perfect blend of comedy and truth. Able to maintain a lighthearted feel while addressing real social issues on race, relationship, poverty, status, and parenthood. Ryan was asked to audition for a role on the show and he was actually casted by Donald and his team, but he bailed on Donald at the last minute. According to Donald, Ryan was set to appear in an episode somewhere in season 3. Much of the season takes place in Europe though, so the possibilities are endless and Donald's enthusiasm was strong. Unfortunately, Ryan was unable to make the shoot as the timing never worked out for him to get on a plane and jet off to Europe. He's too busy squeezing into pink roller skates and dancing with Simu Liu to be a part of one of the best modern TV shows ever. Atlanta is unfortunately finished now with its fourth and final season being released in September of last year. Donald has never actually stated that he refuses to work with Ryan, but he has gone on record saying that the chances of them working together now, eh, it's highly unlikely. At number 10, Jesse Smollett. Former Empire star Jesse Smollett made headlines a little while back after faking an attack for 
more attention. Jesse made a claim that he was attacked by a group of people as a hate crime, but after further investigation, it was discovered that the entire altercation was made up by the actor. As a result of the scandal that followed, Jesse was let go from Empire and has been hard pressed to find work elsewhere. The reason why he made up this altercation was an attempt to get a pay raise from the producers of the show, as he was not happy with the salary that he was already making. Now, Hollywood executives know him as someone who will do some shady things to get what he wants, including filing a false police report and faking an assault just to get people to get him more attention. After the incident, Jesse started losing a lot of work and his career hasn't really picked up much since, with some sources saying that he might be blacklisted. At this rate, 2022 might be as challenging as 2021 was for the actor and Hollywood might not have a place for him in the coming year. At number 9, Johnny Depp After Johnny Depp has really been going through it lately. He went through a high profile legal case and a lot of information was exposed, but even after the legal battle against the Sun publication was over, he started losing work. First, he was asked to step down from his role as Grindelwald in the upcoming Fantastic Beast film, and fans found out that he had been blacklisted from Disney as well because of the scandal that is still ongoing with Amber Heard. Now, even though many people are siding with and trying to defend Johnny, it doesn't seem to be making much effect in Hollywood. Fortunately, because of Johnny's image and the media at the moment, it doesn't look like he's going to book many roles in 2022. On top of that, he's still dealing with a lot of legal cases with Amber right now, so acting might not be his top priority at the moment. You might not see much from Johnny in 2022, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Before we carry on talking about some celebrities who might not find work next year, why not take some time to leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far. And while you're at it, consider subscribing to the channel as well to see more videos like this one. At number 8, Bella Thorne. Bella Thorne is no stranger to having a bad reputation in Hollywood. She's been facing backlash since she was a Disney star, and things have just escalated from there. Because she's viewed by many as problematic, Hollywood may be hesitant to hire her for upcoming projects because of how people view her. Just in the last little while, Bella has been in the news for a number of scandals. Last summer, Bella faced backlash for her OnlyFans scam, where she scammed her fans into paying upwards of $200 for content that they weren't happy with, and even prompted a company policy change that affected other creators on the platform. She was also involved in some Twitter beef with her ex, Tana Mojo, because she released a diss track about her. And not too long ago, Bella also faced even more backlash as she publicly defended Army Hammer and the leaked DMs that exposed his bedroom fantasies. Bella just has a way of rubbing people the wrong way, and since she's faced so much backlash just in the last year alone, I feel like Hollywood is going to pass on her for a little while, so she might not book much in 2022. At number 7, Hartley Sawyer. Hartley Sawyer is one actor who might never come back to Hollywood after he got exposed for his incredibly offensive tweets back in 2020. Hartley, who's best known for having played Ralph Dibney, aka the elongated man on the CW's The Flash, faced a heck of a lot of backlash when many of his past tweets were brought to light. These tweets, which span as far back as 2009, highlight Hartley's offensive attempt at humor, many of them including racist, sexist, homophobic, and even violent messages. These tweets were brought to light during the Black Lives Matter movement that saw a big jump in support last summer, and as fans dug deep into many celebrities' lives, this was one of the biggest stories of celebrity exposure to come out during that time. As a result of these offensive tweets, Harley was fired from his role on The Flash and hasn't been seen on social media since issuing an apology for his actions. Because of the reputation he now has for being offensive, combined with the fact that he's been out of Hollywood for so long, I have a feeling that Hartley won't be back in the spotlight for a long time, so 2022 might not be his year to return. At number 6, Stacey Dash. Known for her role as Dion in the 90s film Clueless, Stacey Dash rose to fame in the 90s, but since then she's hit rock bottom and is no longer welcome in the entertainment industry. Nowadays, the actress is known for being quite outspoken when it comes to her political views, and this is what led Hollywood to lock her out, so to speak, and she hasn't been in the acting world for years. Speaking out about her take on women's rights, Black History Month, segregation, and the quote-unquote bathroom bill, the actress has proven herself to be too much for even the likes of Fox News, for which she used to be a part of. Stacey would often come on air on Fox News to talk about whatever issues were being discussed, but in a turn of events, Fox News let her go after having gone too far with her words, especially in reference to the abolishment of Black History Month. Some people have said that her extreme beliefs are what stopped Stacey from receiving any roles, and she's even said that she was dropped by her agent for being too problematic. Her views on gay and trans rights, as well as her opinion on race in Hollywood, have ultimately ended her career as an actress, so she definitely won't be welcomed back to Hollywood in 2022. Halfway number 5, Chris Cuomo. CNN's Chris Cuomo has officially been fired from his network after an investigation uncovered the anchor helped his brother disgrace Governor Andrew Cuomo during his scandal. Earlier, they announced that he was going to be suspended, barring the results of the investigation. 
But partway through the investigation, they had uncovered enough to fire him. CNN wrote, quote, While in the process of that review, additional information has come to light. Despite the termination, we will investigate as appropriate. This all comes on the heels of an investigation by the New York Attorney General's office, which suggested that he was heavily involved in his brother's scandal. Following his termination, reports are coming out that Chris was accused of sexual harassment and that's a part of the reason for his termination. So it's clear that no network will want to touch him. And at number four, James Corden. James Corden is the beloved host of The Late Late Show. He's produced viral segments like Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts and Carpool Karaoke. But a lot of people don't know that he started out as an actor and he wants to do more of it in the future. But unfortunately, the public does not want this for him. He's doing everything possible to keep him away from their favorite musicals. He was a part of the live remake of Cats, which was a disastrous failure. Then after it was announced that Ariana Grande was going to be acting in the big screen version of Wicked, the public was worried that James Corden might try to get involved. So someone started a petition called, quote, Keep James Corden out of Wicked. The bio for the petition simply stated, James Corden in no way, shape, or form should be in or near the production of Wicked the movie. That's pretty much it. And almost immediately got over 50,000 signatures. So it's clear that James will not be hired for any more musicals in the future. And at number three, Ice Cube. With the new rules surrounding vaccines in the workplace, some Hollywood stars have been kicked off new movies because they refuse to get the shot. Ice Cube has officially stepped away from Sony's upcoming comedy, Oh Hell No, in which he would have co-starred with Jack Black because he refused to get the shot. The cast was set to start filming this winter in Hawaii, but it was required that all parties on set get the vaccine. Apparently, Ice Cube walked away from $9 million. Until vaccine mandates are lifted from production, it seems like Ice Cube will not be working. And at number two, Steve Burton. General Hospital star Steve Burton confirmed on Instagram that he had been fired from his long running role on the show over refusal to get the vaccine. After rumors had been swirling, he took to Instagram to clear up any rumors. He said, quote, unfortunately, General Hospital has let me go because of the vaccine mandate. I did apply for my medical and religious exemptions, and both of those were denied, which hurts. But this is also about personal freedom to me. Apparently, the whole talk about mandates happened after Burton tested positive for COVID back in August and production was shut down. After that occurrence, the vaccine mandate was created. General Hospital is currently the only soap drama that has the vax mandate. The other three main soaps are using regular testing and social distancing to prevent the spread. And finally, at number one, Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson has been accused of horrific crimes by multiple of his ex-partners. Actress Evan Rachel Wood posted to her Instagram on February 1st of 2021, exposing that she had been by Manson. In the long statement, she said that he started engaging with her while she was only a teen and she was quote, brainwashed and manipulated into submission. She then claimed that she did not want to live in fear and she wants to expose him before he does more harm. Concluding quote, I stand with the many women who will no longer be silent. Wood, who was 33, met Manson when she was 18 and he was 36 back in 2007. They later got engaged in 2010 for eight months until the relationship ended. This statement on Instagram came as four other women have recently come forward with allegations against Manson. Manson has denied the allegations, but he still has been blacklisted until these legal matters are sorted out. Wood even recently revealed that Manson threatened to hurt her eight-year-old son. The only person who has collaborated with him since the allegations was Connie. Kanye West, and nobody else in the music business wants anything to do with him. And at number 10, Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin's career is on the verge of being over after he accidentally shot two people on the set of the movie Rust, killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Following the tragedy, the movie has been trying to piece together what exactly happened to cause this to occur. Blame has been placed on the assistant director, along with the armorer, but it seems that the set was full of safety concerns almost as soon as it started. And it was later discovered that other cast and crew members walked off the set before the shoot shooting because of safety issues. As of now, the movie itself and Alec Baldwin are being sued by a number of parties. It's difficult to say how at fault he was in this situation, but at the end of the day, he is the one that fired the bullet, and until things are sorted out, he should not work on another project. And at number 9, Shia LaBeouf. FKA Twig's real name Talia Barnett recently exposed that she endured a toxic and abusive relationship with Shia LaBeouf. She later decided to sue him for his harmful and manipulative actions, unearthing tons of stories where LaBeouf was toxic, reckless, and even put her life in danger. Apparently, he was so controlling that she wasn't even able to look other men in the eye or he would get angry. She eventually had the courage to leave and is now hoping she gets justice for the terrible treatment that he put her through. The two parties are currently trying to settle their differences without a trial, but if not, it will be set for sometime in 2023. There have been no major updates in the case as of now, but singer Sia came forward during this time and revealed that Shia coerced her into an adulterous relationship with him. So clearly, he has a history of mistreatment that must be resolved before he works in the spotlight again. 
And at number 8, Travis Scott. Travis Scott is public enemy number 1 following the tragic Astroworld festival that took place in Houston. As of now, 10 people have passed away following the festival, while hundreds are injured. After the festival, fans realized this problematic behavior was not a one-off, and Travis had injured many of his fans in the past at his rowdy concerts. He and the concert organizers are now getting sued in a mountain of lawsuits that equal to potentially billions of dollars in payouts. Following this disaster, no concert venue or promoter will ever want to work with him again because the liability on his events will no longer be worth it. Many have speculated that Travis could even go bankrupt because of the money he's going to be paying out. There's even a potential for criminal charges depending on what is uncovered. In at number 7, Dave Chappelle. After his special sticks and stones, Dave Chappelle is at the center of a debate about whether comedians should be able to say offensive comments under the guise of comedy. It was clear that he had won because sticks and stones became the most watched stand-up comedy special of all time. Then he released The Closer in 2021, and it was even more controversial in his stance on trans issues, reigniting the flames of cancel culture. Petitions were then filed asking Netflix to remove his special, along with Netflix employees leaving the company because they didn't agree with their decision to air the special. After The Closer was released, Chappelle tried to premiere a documentary, but was not able to. He said, quote, this film that I made was invited to every film festival in the United States, and some of those invitations I accepted. When this controversy came about, the closer, they began disinviting from these festivals, and now, today, not a film company, not a movie studio, not a film festival, not nobody will touch this film. And at number 6, Tory Lanez. In July of 2020, Megan Thee Stallion was allegedly shot in the foot after a party at Kylie Jenner's house. A month later, she claimed that Tori was the person who did it. Tori has continued to deny this, but evidence keeps mounting against Lanes. The two are now in a legal battle as Megan wants him to be held accountable for his actions. Tori is currently facing two felony charges of assault with a semi-automatic firearm and carrying a loaded, unregistered firearm in a vehicle, plus the charge of personally inflicting great bodily injury. If he is convicted, he could spend up to 22 years in prison. In. As of now, he has pled not guilty and has fought to speak about the case publicly, but the judge has denied this request. Toy was then brought out of the Rolling Loud Festival during the baby set, which was against Megan's restraining order because she was also performing at the festival. Because he violated this order, Megan is bringing him back to court. As of now, nobody wants to be affiliated with him. Number 5. J.K. Rowling As a Harry Potter geek, this one always stinks. J.K. Rowling is known for being the author of the much-loved Harry Potter series that was eventually adapted into seven glorious, magical movies and Order of the Phoenix. In June 2020, Rowling retweeted an op-ed piece that discussed people who menstruate, apparently taking issue with the fact that the article didn't use the word woman. She tweeted, People who menstruate. I'm sure there used to be a word for those people. Someone help me out. Wubben. Wimpund. Wumud. While these tweets garnered massive amounts of backlash from fans, Rowling doubled down on her views in more detail. She tweeted, If gender isn't real, then there's no same gender attraction. I know and love trans people, but erasing the concept of gender removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. She went on to say that she respected trans people's right to live any way that feels authentic to them. At the same time, her life has been shaped by being a female. Okay. She claimed it wasn't wrong to speak the truth and be proud, but like, <laughs> it is sometimes though. Everyone in the world called JK out for her comments and views with the live-action Harry Potter stars even taking to Twitter to call out her behavior and stand with the trans community. She's unfortunately still making money off the Fantastic Beast movies, but she's been refused to work on set for the rest of her days, having to watch her property prosper without her. Number 4. Roseanne Barr In the late 80s, Roseanne starred in a sitcom titled after herself. She starred alongside Hollywood heavyweight John Goodman in a series that followed the couple's everyday lives as a working-class family. The show aired for 230 episodes, eventually being cancelled in the mid-90s. It was eventually revived in 2018 as the same wholesome content just for a new generation. Unfortunately for Roseanne, sitcom producers have Twitter. Her show was quickly recancelled only a few hours following Barr posting a tweet about Valerie Jarrett, telling the world that she was the product of Planet of the Apes and a certain brotherhood had a baby. She later apologized for the tweets, but the damage had been done. ABC Entertainment President Channing Dungy said in a statement that Roseanne's Twitter statement is abhorrent repugnant and inconsistent with their values. Barr actually defended her tweets saying that they weren't racist but in fact a joke. Oh yeah, those can be the same thing. She's yet to be hired by any studio and has stayed silent ever since. Number 3. Dave Chappelle Dave Chappelle dominated the comedy scene in the 90s and early 2000s. His stand-up was considered to be 
the most gut-busting and entertaining around, and his role in films like The Nutty Professor, Robin Hood Men in Tights, and the cult classic Half Baked garnered him a massive success. He took a bit of a break from starring in films to focus on his family and his true passion, stand-up comedy. Despite being on stage for over 12 years though, Dave never really learned how to follow suit with the times. Uh, in case you don't know, there's a lot of stuff that, there are certain topics that became kind of rude to joke about, you know? Many jokes considered funny in the 80s and 90s just haven't aged well, and unfortunately it seems like that's all the material Dave has. In one of his most recent Netflix specials, he made jokes aimed at the LGBTQ plus community, jokes that are not worth quoting or repeating or, or watching, just leave it at that. They were rough enough to have Dave's fans turn on him immediately. While he was cancelled by his fans, Netflix actually defended the comedian, claiming he had artistic freedom even after a group of Netflix employees and transgender advocates staged a virtual walkout. The co-CEO, Ted Sarandos, who released that statement, later admitted that he handled the situation poorly. Oh, did you, Ted? Dave hasn't been cast in anything anytime in recent history, as any and all who've collaborated with him in the past have decided to distance themselves from him just as much as possible. Number two, Mike Myers. He's Canadian. He's a comedian. How could this guy be a meanie bow beanie? Well, it turns out that's his default setting. Mike may be well known in the world of Hollywood as a funny man, but to his fans, he's known as a short-tempered madman. One experience was shared with the media outlet Mean Stars, in which a fan told a story of running into Mike at a bar, with the experience being as disastrous as the love guru. Like, like anything could be that bad. The fan walked up and told Mike that he was a big fan and he offered to buy him a drink. To which Mike replied, Well I can afford my old drinks, ye whole save the cash for my next movie. There are several instances both on and off set showcasing his difficulty working with people. His Cat in the Hat co-stars, uh, sorry, I get a weird flashback whenever I talk about that movie. His co-star Amy Hill claimed that he had handlers dress his entire trailer and work area so that he wouldn't be able to be seen by anybody else on set. Maybe his reputation as a difficult Donnie has something to do with Hollywood seemingly blacklisting him from appearing as a lead in anything until his recent show The Pentaveret aired on Netflix. A show where he's forced to play half of the cast because, hey, he couldn't get anyone else to come do it with him. Maybe it has something to do with the love guru. I don't know, just maybe. He just it was a little racist. Number one, James Franco. James has placed himself in a little bubble of public exile for using his powers for evil. The man behind some iconic characters like his portrayal as real life filmmaker Tommy Wiseau, his role as Harry Osborn in the original Spider-Man trilogy, and so many more seem to be on the way to a long successful career following multiple collaborations with his longtime friend Seth Rogen, as well as his turn in more serious roles like True Story as a man on death row telling his tale of woe to a writer played by Jonah Hill. Apparently though, James has a problem keeping his hands to himself, especially when it comes to his acting students. In 2018, five female students at his Studio 4 acting school in North Hollywood told the Los Angeles Times that Franco had parlayed his position to exploit them physically. Two of those women sued and Franco was forced to settle outside of court and fork over $2.23 million. At the time, he was writing, acting, and directing a show for HBO called The Deuce, which he was allowed to stay on and finish because hey, it was being canceled. Anyway, not only did fans call for the cancellation of that series, but the public outcry forced Seth Rogen to drop his longtime pal, telling the Times of London that his scandal had changed their relationship and he refused to collaborate with James anytime in the near future. So, starting off our list today at number 10, we have Will Smith. So, for a while now, Will Smith and his wife Jada Pinkett Smith have been denying the fact that they are members of the Church of Scientology. However, if this was the case, then why did they operate one of the church's private schools for their children? children in their home. As in the report published by Daily Beast, they would confirm that the leadership academy that was taking place in one of the couple's homes was essentially a Scientology school, and the teachers the couple had working in the school were followers of the religion where Scientology was studied among the classes. So the teachers at the school were constantly told to talk about building materials into the curriculum that were related to Scientology. And there were even parents who removed their children from the school after they realized that the curriculum revolved around Scientology's practices. Well, Will Smith definitely wants to curb his involvement with the church after it's clear his wife forced him into it. He has turned down roles with Tom Cruise, so fans don't get the wrong idea about his involvement when it comes to the church. Number 9, Nicholas Holt. Back in 2019, director Christopher McQuarrie would return to the Mission Impossible franchise not for his third directorial effort in the series, but his fourth as well. The two films would compromise the final entries in the entire saga, and it would send Cruise's Ethan Hunt 
front out in a two part bang. But did you know Nicholas Holt was offered a role by Tom Cruise himself after passing a fight choreography test with flying colors, but then he turned down the film. As the production delays created a problem for the star as he already booked other projects that included a Dracula spin off, so despite the personal invitation from Tom and all the physical prep work, he flat out turned Tom Cruise down. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. At number 8 we have Jessica Chastain. Imagine being an Oscar nominated actor signed up for a movie opposite of Tom Cruise, but then you turn the role down last minute to pursue a different role in another project. Well this is exactly what happened to Jessica Chastain. Now you might think a superstar like Tom Cruise would be furious to lose an actor who could very well help make his film or break it, or that he was insulted that they wanted to back out of being his co-star. That very scenario played out to be kind of true when Jessica wiggled out of her commitment to the film, Oblivion. So she could star in another movie. She also turned down the star again when she was offered a role in Mission Impossible just a year later. But she opted out of the film due to its ridiculous training that was required for the film's role. But honestly, the way she just last minute backed out of both roles just proves that she just didn't want to work with Tom Cruise. Number 7. Val Kilmer So Val Kilmer has turned down two roles when it comes to starring in a movie with Tom Cruise. The first role would be for the movie Collateral. Well at first Val was announced to star in the film in an undisclosed role. It would be announced later that he departed from the film because of the shooting schedule when it came into conflict with the film Alexander, which he was already well into filming. Then he would turn down to collaborate with Tom Cruise for a second time when he turned down a role for the film The Outsiders because he was prepping for a run on Broadway and a play titled Slab Boys. And in hindsight, this might have been a wrong move as the play only ran for six weeks. And in addition, Kevin Bacon and Sean Penn to cast saw Val being bumped down to a supporting role. Now eventually, Val did end up working with Tom when he starred in the film Top Gun, but initially, he also turned down that role. He only ended up taking it because Tom Cruise just kept hounding him about the role. Number six, Bill Murray. Imagine if Ghostbusters star ended up playing Bill Harford in the film's Eyes Wide Shut. Well, it actually almost happened as Stanley Kubrick's 2020 release book, American Filmmaker, it would reveal that Bill was on the filmmaker's shortlist of casting choices when he was planning the movie in the 1980s before the role went to Tom Cruise in 1999. But that's not the role he turned down to obviously work with Tom Cruise. As just a decade earlier, Bill was actually offered a role opposite of Tom in the 1988 drama Rain Man. With the original script being sent to Bill by Mark Ovitz at CAA, Bill just decided not to read the film mainly because he wasn't interested in the project as he heard Tom Cruise was involved in it. So the role was given to Dustin Hoffman instead. Bill didn't feel too bad about turning down the role as he could have won an Academy Award for Best Actor because after he turned down the chance to start alongside Tom Cruise, he turned his attention to Scrooge which has become an iconic Christmas classic and one of his most celebrated roles. Now at number 5 is Morgan Freeman, the voice of God himself. Morgan Freeman has been soothing the soul of many for many years. To this day, families can hear Morgan narrate the world around them in an immersive 360 IMAX at the Science Center in Toronto. He may be a comfort to some, but according to a few women, Morgan is their nightmare. Morgan has been accused of inappropriate behavior on multiple occasions between 1991 and 2015. According to one production assistant from the film Going in Style, a bank heist movie starring Freeman, Michael Caine and Alan Arkman said that Freeman subjected a woman to unwanted touching and comments about her figure and clothing on a near daily basis. This move is rarely received well. Get a new move, or better yet, don't have a move. Just walk up and say hi and show her your Beanie Baby collection. According to her, in one instance, Freeman attempted to lift her skirt and asked to see under her clothes. She was not the only one to speak out. A senior member of production staff on the movie, Now You See Me Too, told CNN that Freeman harassed her and her female assistant on numerous occasions, making similar comments on her figure and clothes. I could go on more and more with examples, but to save time and boil it down for you, Morgan is creepy. In case you haven't noticed, he doesn't act much anymore more and is regularly refused work by any and all, he asks. At number 4 we have Rihanna, who was apparently a rude lady, according to some of her fans at least. A fan shared their story of a co-worker who experienced firsthand just how cold she can be. They told Insider that they had won free tickets and backstage passes from a radio concert. When it came time for the co-worker and her kids to meet Rihanna, she was sitting at her makeup booth and refused to face them. When the young fans asked if they could get her autograph, she instructed a nearby backup dancer to forge the signature before shooing them away like an actual 
actual villain. Oh, you want my love? Shoo. In 2016, she further added fuel to the fire when she shared a photo of a young fan wearing a dress inspired by Rihanna's Wile E. Coyote themed costume that she'd worn at an award show a few years prior. She wrote, Dark Thought Rises with the hashtag Prombat. She th shared the post with millions of people, alienating countless fans and ruining one fan's prom memories for the rest of their lives. Rihanna could have been the next big pop slash TV star, but her attitude just makes people look at her. And at number three, we have Tom Cruise. While Tom may be an action movie star and was once a young Hollywood heartthrob, he's had a massive temper since day one. According to both former assistants as well as several co stars from Tom's past, Cruise is a regular toddler and is known to throw tantrums, being set off by the smallest of things. His former manager, Eileen Berlin, presented Tom with a gift on his 19th birthday. She gave him an album of teen magazine articles written about him, and apparently that set him off. He told his manager he considered himself an adult, not a teen idol, and threw the book right back in her face. Another example of Tom's aggression was on display during a filming of his recent Top Gun sequel, Top Gun Maverick. During this time, Tom and the rest of the film crew were tasked to shoot an actual aircraft carrier still in use by the US military. One of the crew posted on Twitter calling out the audacity of Tom's behavior. He tweeted Tom Cruise was really on our ship, telling people not to talk or even look at him. After a few choice words, the crewmate made it very clear that Tom was not welcome aboard their vessel. These are just two examples though. Tom has blown up on film crews several times in the past to the point where his Mission Impossible 2 co-star was constantly scared of Tom on set and what he may freak out about next. Needless to say, nobody is lining up to hire Tom in their next pick, other than whoever's stuck making the next Mission Impossible movie. And our runner up is Russell Crowe, the gladiator star and newest addition to the world of mythology in the MCU playing Zeus. Russell has had a steady career filled with blockbuster paychecks and fans galore, but according to several sources, the Pope's exorcist has quite the temper. In 2005, he made headlines for throwing a cell phone at a Mercer Hotel employee in New York City. Apparently he found out it was broken and threw it without looking. It exploded on impact. The incident ended up being taken a bit far, but that was not the only example of his escapades. In 2016, he returned to the media circuit, this time facing charges of alleged violence towards rapper Azalea Banks. That dissolved into a he said, she said situation that was settled outside of court. Crow has also made a mess on the set of his early days. A producer on the film Gladiator claims that Crow became furious and violent when he discovered how much the producer's assistant was being paid. The situation forced the producer Branko Lustique to quit the production. While many fans love Crow and Gladiator, the people on set were a different story entirely. His career is slowly on the decline as showcased by his recent passion projects The Pope's Exorcist, a low budget dreadful movie that almost everyone involved regrets ever participating in. And our number one spot goes to Taylor Swift. Taylor's tyranny of torment must end now. Taylor Swift has made a name for herself as a person who thrives on ending of a relationship. Since the late 2000s, Taylor has been making millions in the music industry. Her songs like Love Story and 22 are anthems to many. The catchy tunes tend to come from a place of a so-called heartache. However, Taylor has thanked her exes on several occasions for inspiring the songs that made her who she is today. People like Tom Hiddleston, Harry Styles, Jake Gyllenhaal all have a part to play in the inception of some bops. The argument can and should be made that Taylor should just chill. She's made several songs that were good without the need to berate an ex. Some of those songs were revealing. Imagine if after every breakup you've ever had, song pops up in your phone by U2 called Why They Left You. While she may have collaborated with some artists in the past, nobody is jumping at the chance to work with her and possibly have a song written about their bad job. Number 10, Hugh Jackman. The man with the metal claws and the soothing voice, Hugh Jackman has had a long-standing beef with Ryan Gosling ever since 2011 when Ryan was chosen over him for a pretty significant role. Ryan famously portrayed the main character of the film Drive, a film which follows a mysterious Hollywood action film stuntman who gets in trouble with gangsters when he tries to help his neighbor's husband rob a pawn shop while serving as the getaway driver, a thriller action piece that is considered to be one of Ryan's best performances to date. It's pretty strange though to think that Hugh Jackman was almost casted in the leading role, but he was replaced with Ryan at the last minute. Jackman had reportedly signed all the paperwork, he had meetings to finalize his involvement in the flick, every Everything was good to go. Unfortunately for him, the director Nicholas Winding felt that Ryan was better suited for the role and that was true. Ryan is perfect in the flick, and the idea that Hugh Jackman almost played him instead is a little uncomfortable. It's all good though, Drive launched Gosling's career as a more serious actor 
actor and Hugh starred in The Greatest Showman. There's no joke there, I just wanted to remind you all that that exists. Number 9, Jared Leto. Jared Leto is one of the strangest men in Hollywood. Stranger still are the roles that this man chooses to take. In 2016, Leto delivered what is considered to be the worst performance as the clown prince of darkness, the Joker, in the dumpster fire version of The Suicide Squad. Leto wasn't DC's first choice to don the wig and makeup, however, it was actually Ryan Gosling that was initially offered that role. While it's fun to imagine Gosling in the role, the reality was that Ryan was not about to sign a multi-film contract to play one of the most unhinged men in comic book history. The simple reason was, that was how he liked it. He doesn't do multi-movie deals, he's not one for starring in sequels or remakes, but ironically, despite Leto signing the multi-year deal, he actually only ever appeared as the Joker one more time in a glorified cameo in Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut. It's a four hour movie, oh, and where's the Joker? Three hours and 45 minutes. Ryan's behavior towards such contracts has caused Jared to refuse ever working with Gosling, claiming that he has no idea what a privilege it is to be offered such a contract. Yeah, okay Jared, go make another Morbius movie and, and then tell me how you feel about contracts. Number 8, Rachel McAdams. Alright, in 2004, Nicholas Sparks' novel The Notebook was adapted into a live action movie starring Ryan and Rachel McAdams. I know they work together. Many may know Rachel from her role in the iconic comedy flick Mean Girls as Queen of the Plastic Regina George. The Notebook was a hit for hopeless romantics and people being dragged to the theaters by their partners. The movie centers around Allie and Noah, who despite considering each other soulmates, bicker constantly. Which oddly enough translated to their real life relationship as well. According to the director Nick Cassavetes, the two would constantly fight on set, with Ryan even demanding that she be taken out and replaced with a stand in whenever her face wasn't needed for a shot. Despite the movie doing well, the pair never spoke following the premiere. But Rachel claims she's done working with Ryan for a different reason entirely. You see, a few years following the film's release, these two actually ended up getting together in real life, apparently longing for those long fights and steamy nights from the notebook days. While the relationship ultimately didn't work out, they were together long enough to know what each other looked like in their birthday suits, and, <laughs> and that is a line that you just can't uncross, you know? They'll never work together again. Bow well. Number 7, Meryl Streep. There are some folks out there that just swoon when this man enters their field of view, and Meryl Streep is one of them. One of the most adored women in Hollywood history was spotted adjusting Ryan's tie at the Screen Actors Guild Award a few years ago after noticing that it was a bit askew. Ryan's face is lit up in the photos, and who can blame him? Donna from Mamma Mia just straightened his tie! Meryl was friendly with everyone that night, but with Ryan in particular, she was calm, cool, collected, so flirtatious and charming. When asked about the helpful hint at the award ceremony during an interview, Meryl began to blush. During an episode of The Grand Norton Show, she expressed her appreciation for Ryan as a performer and for his little cutie patootie. Apparently she has a little crush on Ryan and the feeling is mutual, so much so that when Meryl was asked to participate in the upcoming Barbie movie, she had to politely decline, for the simple fact that she'd be having too much fun with Ryan and distracting him from his work. Too bad the idea of Meryl playing a Barbie variant or even being one of the real world villains like Will Ferrell would be cool, but uh, I guess, I guess that would be a little bit too like Devil Wears Prada for this movie though. No Barbie, you're not going to Paris. Number 6, Ryan Reynolds. I know what you're saying, Nate, they're both named Ryan, how could these guys ever fight? While this is one feud that both Ryans wish would just, would just go away. In 2011, Ryan Reynolds was cast to play the live action adaptation of DC's Green Lantern Hero. I do apologize to anyone suffering from a traumatic flashback that I have mentioned that, please just take a moment to compose yourself. While the film received terrible reviews, Reynolds actually holds a grudge for that film towards Gosling, apparently Gosling was on track to play Green Lantern, but he had to back out at the last minute due to a prior commitment. I don't know though, the timing and coincidence of this is just a little suspicious. Reynolds stepped in at the last minute and did everything he could to make this movie good. I do mean that, he is the only person who tried to make this thing good. But thanks to the CGI, the terrible writing, and the studio executives, the project was a dumpster fire. And But despite that, Ryan Reynolds has vowed to never work with Gosling again for fear that he may flake on the project he actually cares about. So, for anybody hoping to see Ryan Reynolds and Barbie, it's only bad news bears. 
Number 5. Jason Alexander Jason Alexander became a household name thanks to his iconic role as a quirky, down, on his luck New Yorker in the trailblazing sitcom Seinfeld. But before he was a sitcom star, he was offered a role in the 1992 legal drama A Few Good Men. It all happened in 1990 when director Rob Rayner was assembling his class and according to actor Kevin Pollock, in an interview with Vanity Fair in 2017, he would state his role was actually intended for Jason in the first place but he turned down the role for Seinfeld because it got renewed so Kevin went on to snag the role in the film A Few Good Men and work alongside Tom Cruise. Jason knew better off to stick with the role but he did curse Kevin for earning 4 Academy Award nominations and he still waiting for Kevin to quit a job for him to say thank you. Number 4. Dennis Rodman So you wouldn't expect basketball star Dennis Rodman being offered a role in a Tom Cruise film, but at the height of his fame when he was playing alongside NBA legend Michael Jordan for the Chicago Bulls, he attempted to make a big time Hollywood career in the process, where he actually starred in a few major films that included Double Team and Simon Says, but neither of these films brought him the type of fame he was hoping for. But it all could have gone down a really different path if he didn't turn down an offer to star opposite to Tom Cruise in the 1996 sport comedy Jerry Maguire. In the film, Tom would play a sports agent who starts his own firm, struggling to survive with one of the complicated superstar clients, Rod Tidwell, who was played by Cuba Gooding Jr., but originally this character was supposed to be played by Dennis. And he turned down the role. While it's still unknown to why Dennis really turned down the role, many have thought it was because there might have been some scheduling conflicts conflict with his NBA duties, but the role actually allowed Cuba Gooding Jr. to win an Oscar, so maybe Dennis just should have taken the role. Number 3. Ian McKellen When it comes to Mission Impossible movies, they have always had a great villain with talented actors playing slippery, slimy, international criminals. And for the second film, Tom almost enlisted the services of British actor Ian McKellen, but ultimately the actor decided to turn down Tom's offer by making a statement in an interview with People magazine in July of 2015, where he told the outlet if he agreed to take the role in Tom's film, then he would have missed out on two of his most iconic roles, before he made fun of Tom saying they wouldn't let him see the script and decided that his scenes were just good enough because the production team was scared. Ian might have just leaked the whole script to the media. So he only got the scenes that he was doing for his audition and it didn't sit so well with him, as he wasn't happy with the thought of agreeing to do a project without seeing the entire story. So he said, said no, and his agent told him, you can't say no to working with Tom Cruise, and Ian told his agent, I think I will. Luckily Ian made the right choice as then he was offered a role not only in the X-Men movies, but also in the Lord of the Rings franchise. And if he did take Tom's movie, he would have never been able to do those roles, so it would have been a huge loss for him. Number 2. Javier Bardem Javier Bardem got his start in Spain after he starred in a number of films throughout the 1990s before making the leap to Hollywood. Eventually after a small role alongside Tom Cruise in Collateral, and a leading part in the drama Goya's Ghost, he then gained notoriety in the film No Country for Old Men before Collateral, Javier actually almost starred with Tom Cruise. In the 2002 Steven Spielberg directed sci-fi action Minority Report. In fact, during a speech at the Toronto Film Festival in 2017, Spielberg even revealed that Javier was his original choice for the Department of Justice agent Danny Whitwer. But the star was kind of intimidated about making a leading role in such a high profile role for one of his first American projects, not just because it was difficult for him to jump into a foreign language for his performance at the time as his English wasn't that good, but he also didn't want to step on Tom Cruise's toes as the actor is a bit of a hothead from time to time. So that's why the role went to Colin Farrell. Coming in number one today, we have Ricky Jarvis. For Mission Impossible 3, Tom also served as a producer on the franchise franchise, and he needed the film to go in a fresh direction. After failing to get the project in motion with Joe Carnahan, he turned to TV director JJ Abrams to direct the next installment. Looking for some new members to cast, Abrams put out an offer to Ricky Jarvis. In the beginning, the actor was excited to join the film, but unfortunately, due to repeated delays in the film's production, it proved to be a real problem for Ricky, as he was really committed not only to his own TV series, but also with the Christopher Guest film for your consideration. Eventually, Ricky then made the decision to drop this film. While this wouldn't be the last time Abrams would call Ricky, 
star in his films, it was certainly the last time he ever agreed to star in a movie with Tom Cruise.